Give me your 3080. <laughs> Give it to me. What are you going to do? You have a 7800 XT. What do you want what? about? <laughs> Shut up. Welcome back to another Linux Teamcast Weekly. The show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben with Jordan and Pedro, and together with you, Shadow Realm Dynamic, helping us form cocaine. Voltron, look at him. So Katie, so cokey. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's going to be doing a commercial with the bear, polar bears. Yeah. They're going to be doing Enjoy blow. life. Have a Coke. I mean, canes. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's up? What's new? We got a junkie show. Uh, we got, of course, we're going to be talking about the uh, Steam thing. Steam got a little takedowny this week. But before we jump into it, I got some presents in the mail. Oh? Mm-hmm. Oh, that one's kind of heavy, though. Unfortunately, I did not get another eSATA dock that was supposed to be a uh, USB. <laughs> did, did you get a cast iron external drive? Oh, man. See, now I want to do my my whole, like, V-cast accessories, man. Yeah, cast mm-hmm. iron everything. Cast iron monitor? Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> <laughs> Starting, um, no, I got this. This is kind of cool. This is a Fire Studio Mobile complete in box from PreSonus. Hmm. That's always nice, man, when you get stuff, because I think these came out in, like, 2006, 2007. I, yeah, that it, looks like an old box. Uh, it was made to look like an old box, mm, right. like, even when it was made. I mean, it, it, it's in mint shape, Jordan. I'll have you know, like, I'm going to, you know, put this in game collectors. I, I like saying complete in box. Uh, yeah, Fire Studio Mobile, going to be doing that for interfacing Linux. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't expect the box, because I got this because I'm trying to get something for $9.99 right now because I need it for a bit. <laughs> so I'm putting a bunch of bids down for like $9.99, hoping I'll like win that. And I think I got that for a few bucks. But more importantly, I got a Tascam, whatever the hell this is. Ooh, it's got, got a wheel, got a fancy it spins. Knob. <laughs> it's, it's got a wheel, it's got buttons on it. It's also like a full-blown audio interface with mic jacks and it's got guitar Whoa. inputs in the front. And yeah, it's got a jog dial on it. And it's like, and this jog dial is like made out of like metal. Like you could mm. brain somebody with this jog dial. It is heavy. It feels really good too. It's got mini ports in the back and uh, it's another Firewire device. I have no idea. I have no idea. This is, this is going to be a fascinating experiment when we plug it in <laughs> and find out what exactly it does. Yeah, that, that's my excitement for this week. Um, how about you, Jordan? We did a podcast on uh, Thursday. We, we did. We, we talked about uh, Doctor Who and uh, our our sort of views of the past couple seasons and the specials. So that was that was the thing. Uh, as as Ben cautioned me, I'm I'm drifting towards Hoarder Zone because <laughs> I've discovered an auction site where I can get a lot of cool shit for really cheap. And now I have to fight the. It's such a good deal. It would be stupid of me to not buy it. Yeah, I mean, I, we're saving money by doing this. Uh, yeah. I did catch... A thousand a, feet of uh, speaker cable, man. You and MD having a conversation in Discord, I think, on Thursday, because uh, you were saying, yeah, you're recording, we're going to be doing uh, Wizards and Shit is the name of the podcast we do. Yeah. Uh, and MD was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's episode 10. Really? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we went through an entire season of Rings of Power and House of the Dragon. Yeah. Which was also tangentially Doctor Who related because Doctor Who attempted to have sex with his niece. Yes, it had Doctor Who in it. Before that, we did Game of Who. Yes. Uh, We've always got like one of those weird things. Uh, I'll eventually get all this back up. Uh, These are things we're horrible about promoting. Even if you are a patron, (laughs) we're horrible about promoting that. They they were like patron exclusive things, but now it's just like, oh. No, no, they've been up forever. I've just happened to have them sitting in a drive. So I'll put them up on like Spotify or something. So if anybody wants to go back and listen to them. Uh, and I'll have the, uh, latest wizards and shit out. Um, I don't know, like Monday or Tuesday, I want to get a chance to sit down and edit it, but mm-hmm. it was a good conversation. We had some people show up. We streamed it on Twitch and everybody had their thoughts on it because, Hey man, we're, we're unpacking, you know, the tenants back for a minute. And then we got yes. a new doctor to play with and have fun. Um, Pedro Mateus, have you, uh, purchased any, um, you know, like plastic shelled devices lately? Premium. Have, have you have you melted any plastic, plastic lately? 
Also, also no. Um, my Steam Deck no longer gives off the nice smell. It lost that a few months back. So ah, you not finally finished <laughs> sniffing it all out of it. Would you? Pay, yes. How much would you? How much would you pay for like a uh, magnesium shell? Uh, I think that would make. Uh, an already not negligibly heavy device. You don't buy it <laughs> significantly. <laughs> See, I, I, I was thinking like Obsession for Steam Deck by Calvin Klein, where it's just like you, you can spray it on your Steam Deck to get that smell back. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and just take it apart, <laughs> spray it into the fan, and have a. <laughs> <hand. laughs> no, I. This week has all been about work. It's, unfortunately, I haven't played much of anything. Uh, I played with that. Um, you were that playing something mod. earlier this week, didn't you? Finish something. Uh, I finished um, Risk of Rain Returns, uh, but I had already finished Risk of Rain back in the day. I need, I I need to put this Taskim thing away because now I'm just spinning the wheel around. <laughs> <laughs> and and this, this is why nothing on this episode got done. It's like spin, nope. spin, spin. I'm spin, busy. Spin, spin. Yeah. Wheel time. I I played. Uh, yeah, I finished. I did a run with the the Enforcer and Risk of Rain Returns, and I won. Uh, but yeah, no, I, what I played the most was the, uh, the mod that Patrician TV made for Oblivion, where he, um, it basically just replaces the door at the end of the tutorial and just puts you in a string of like 54 dungeons in a row. And your reward for finishing all of those dungeons is you get to play Oblivion, but, uh, it ends up shaking up like sort of a roguelike. And then by the end, you can just go on and play Oblivion. So it's. It's completely random, but it, I thought it was pretty good. I thought you only played Metroidvanias. <laughs> I th- I've, w- is, is there yeah. a mod that starts up Skyrim? <laughs> I couldn't after bring myself it? to tell Mirror that uh, that's a Ven thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm having a good time with um, Immortals uh, Phoenix Rising. Okay. I, yeah, that, that, was, that was one of those like packing games that everyone kind of ignored, right? Uh, it was one of those games that's like 60 bucks. I'm like, pfft. And then it was uh, 90% off, and I was like, oh, I'll give five bucks for that. I'm, I've got my $5 out of it. It's got jokes, man, depending on how deep you roll in, like, Greek mythology. Okay. It's got jokes in it. Like, they had a fun time writing it. That's all I'll say about it. If you want to play Zelda and you've never played Zelda, <laughs> go for it. Okay. Unfortunately, our horse would not have any of the 3D nonsense that is Zelda. Our horse only plays <laughs> Zelda 2, Jordan. It's kind of strange. Yes. It, it is. Fortunately, we have an artificially intelligent replacement horse. We call it Mid Horsey, and it's hallucinated some really, really awful stuff. Here it is. It's the Steam Linux update of the week. So, speaking of AI generated content, Valve has previously been known to say, just don't do it. Don't put it on our store until we figure out what we're going to be doing with it. Well, they have figured out at least their first draft of what they're gonna be doing about. So here's the AI content policy. It's split up into um, two main sections. Number one is for pre-generated AI content and the other one is for live AI content. For both, you will need to prove that that your uh, training data, you have all the rights to and that was uh, ethically sourced. So uh, so you- Did you say ethically or epically? Eth- ethically, not epically. That, that 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 that's that's when Tim Sweeney pays you a bunch of money to like I don't know draw some shit and then never release it on Steam. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, if 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 you're gonna if you're gonna be using AI to generate like uh, pre-generated assets for your games, you need to prove to Valve that you own the rights to all the training data, or at least you have uh, paid the appropriate licensing fees for live AI games for. Uh, games that are generating AI content on the fly, there is an additional cont- uh, there is an additional restriction, and that is you need to establish and prove that guardrails exist that will prevent the generation of illegal content. And as such, no live AI porn games, period, because you cannot control that shit, period. It will start producing young children, real people, and like you you can't you can't control for that. So Valve is just like, no, we're not gonna deal with it at all. None of that. No, no porn games using live AI on our system. And they're going to be implementing a tool in Steam Overlay that will allow people to report illegal and copyrighted material. There's gonna be, uh, there's gonna be like a a user submission uh, component to this as well, which, you know, as you you would need to do, they're generating things procedurally. So occasionally things will pop up. And a lot of the times, I, I, I would say Valve would be inclined to give the developers the benefit of the doubt, but you still need to get them to put the kibosh on that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, and they've been uh, with the like, depictions of actual people in 
sexually charged games, they've always been, uh, no, you can't do that. There was even a porn star who put her game with her likeness on the Steam store, and that got curtailed immediately right there, not having any of that. So, yeah, it is possibly the best way that Valve could have handled this, uh, and at least hope uh, that uh, it will curb the undisclosed use of AI, just getting people to basically narc on themselves and say, hey, we're using AI, please have a look. Uh, and yeah, it is in the interest of developers themselves to actually be honest and not lie about what in their game is AI generated because they will get caught. And uh, if they do get caught and Valve is like, oh, so you already have a bunch of games, so uh, wh who's to say that you haven't been doing this already and just everything is now gets removed from Steam? No, so, there, there, there's, there's a heavy-handed version of that approach where they will they will come down hard as opposed to, like, yeah. if, the, if there is a particular uh, AI tool that is uh, generating a lot of, like, objectionable material, whether it is illegal or in violation of that terms, will Valve say, like, oh, hey, we're seeing a lot of reports. Y'all have reported, all the developers have reported you're using this tool. Yeah, maybe we're just going to we're just gonna rule out this tool entirely. Mm -hmm. Say you're not allowed to submit games that use this because we've determined that it does not meet our criteria. Yeah, to me, when I'm looking at this, this comes across as Valve going, okay, you know what? You can do AI, but you're not going to have a good time doing it, and we're going to put a narc button in easy reach of everybody. So if you want to fuck around, we'll help you find out. I mean, having the sword of Gabacles hanging over your head constantly with that, like, if you're going to use it, and I, this is going to speak a lot to education, because a lot of people don't understand that. You're know, like, oh, yeah, what, what, what data was this trained on? Was it, like, you know, do I have licensed data or what, who, what model? Hmm. They're going to have to learn these things going forward. And, um, you know, Valve doesn't want to be in the position of having to do that type of education. Hmm. It's going to come around the hard way. But, yeah, moral of the story, man, um, make sure you cross your T's and touch your lowercase J's if you're even thinking about this stuff. And even then, you know, keep your fingers crossed. Hmm. Yeah, be, be honest, seriously, because it's not be going to be good for anyone caught with not, their uh, proverbial not, not, ai pads not just down. be honest <laughs> be vigilant vigilant yeah. is the right word to use for it because the person that you got the tool from could be like yeah completely it's licensed everything yeah, yeah all the language models were uh, uh <laughs> ethically sourced <laughs> well then you got uh you know people who charge premium for it, like adobe and to answer that yes they were they were all done yes. on adobe stuff <laughs> Yeah, and 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 like and and that's fine. That would be allowed by like the Steam terms of service. So like, right. yeah. Uh, up next is uh, something that we got really excited about earlier this week, and uh, then, for a solid day. Yeah, <laughs> and then it's like, ah, uh, no. <laughs> As it turns out, not really that great. But yeah, it's Ioneo. You may have uh, heard about it. Uh, it was everywhere. So they're using SteamOS for the Ioneo Next Lite. No, as it turns out, they're using a whole ISO. God damn it. Uh, at the same time, you know, this is good. This is progress. They're actually going to try and get a holo ISO on a commercially available product. Good luck with them. Hopefully it will be the kick in the nuts that Valve needs to uh, get it done. Because if uh, this ends up being a poor showing, it will reflect poorly on Valve too. Just because holo ISO is pulled directly from the Steam oh. Deck. And the mainstream and media isn't going to give a shit. You no no and, you, you you know that the mainstream media is champing at the bit to say like <laughs> oh man someone released the Linux console and it's fucking garbage mm -hmm. because yeah you 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 know that'll drive clicks right absolutely it'll drive clicks but I, I mean let's be honest like the reception we all thought like they were going to be like picking every single net games media when the Linux gaming console came out which was the Steam Deck. We were fucking wrong. I'll admit, I was fucking wrong, dude, because it has gotten a very warm reception from, like, people I had yeah, no... Yeah, and even people saying that uh, the Windows handhelds don't have the awesome software dude, intuitiveness it, and integration that the Steam Deck does, and I'm like... It's downright popular to wait. hate on Windows <laughs> gaming <laughs> wait, handhelds right when now. When did we cross... Uh, when did I land on this particular timeline because that's fucking weird, man. It is weird. <laughs> um, yeah, we, I mean, it's something we 
go back and listen to last week's show. We were talking about the MSI claw. We're our fierce. Uh, and I got, initially this one, well, shit, there's another thing we wished into existence, you know, as I walked outside and I'm like 49, you don't fall from the sky, you know, uh, Meg Chris rock fell on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's weird. He, he's angry at me at this point. Cause I do that a lot. And, uh, yeah, the ANEO next light is, uh, they said, Hey, this is going to be running steam OS. And they were like, what we meant by that? Okay, uh, people kind of just ran with what we said verbatim. It's mm-hmm. not what we meant. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to understand how you could have misinterpreted that we said it ran SteamOS, because that's what we said. <laughs> because that's but, what but, but, but in our heart, that's not what we <laughs> yeah, meant. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's not the tone we said it with. Uh, you're supposed to pick that up. Oh, yeah, God. It's, it's, it's called subtext. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. you can even argue context on that. Now, this thing is going to be a 7-inch, 800p screen, and a whole lot of speculation following that, because that's all the information we have about it. Yeah, they say it's going to be the budget offering, mm-hmm. which I question the uh, budgetariness of it, because the they're using the same case, the same everything, the same tooling for that they use for the not light version which is a $1,000 handheld starting price. It's mm-hmm. nine ninety nine. So what does budget mean to Aya? Uh, not, well, pay, not, not paying another $100 for the Windows license? Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, is, so uh, it's going to be eight ninety nine. <laughs> don't worry, there's going to be the V-Iron edition. It's going to be cast case. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 absolutely. You, you, can, you can cook some bacon on it, too. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and like I, and I was, I was, I was alluding to before. Part of me expects that, given the use of Hollow ISO, this won't work too great as a product no. because Hollow ISO is a fan project. I want to be wrong. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I, 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 absolutely. And like, people aren't going to be pleased by the hacky, the hacky cheap hardware with the hacky cheap software. And this, and like, it's going to create, it's going to create a bunch of fud. And it's not going to be accurate. It's going to be easily, it's going to be easily refutable by like actual data. But that doesn't matter because people Dad, love their Linux sucks. Dad, games. I want a Steam Deck. Then again, the Steam Deck is the cheaper alternative. So, yeah. Well, and, and yeah, that, that's the other thing too. Is none of, none of these competing handhelds have like knocked on the Steam Steam Deck's like price bracket too. Oh, so. Yeah, because right. Valve can subsidize the Steam yeah. Deck by the thirty percent that they make out of every around, video right. game sale. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you know when when you, when you buy games from them on their on their console, they they make like, money. Have, that. have no Shock. illusion. Like Valve's not doing any of this out of the goodness of its heart. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I'm pretty sure that now the, the cheapest edition is the 350 with the 256 gig SSD. Mm-hmm. They're not making any no. money off of that. It's, it's like Valve <laughs> yeah. looked at Nintendo and went like, we want some of that. You just carry around mm. the little portable store with you. Huh. Oh, and you, you think we're going to get like a market flood of these like uh, like netbooks back in the day? Everyone was fucking churning out netbooks. Oh, we will. We had like, yeah, and gaming netbooks, office netbooks, ultralight netbooks. Yeah, like. <sighs> it, it, but. The big advantage, as both of you have said, is, is the price. You can get the real thing cheaper than you can get, like, the knockoffs right now. And there's really no knockoffs. I, you know, listen, I'm pretty sure the hollow uh, people are going to, like, I, I want it to work. I want it scrape. But, he, like, we got to see. For all we know, like, that's going to be, like, the play, man. It turns out being as good, if not, you know, at least equal mm-hmm. to SteamOS. And Valve has nobody but, like, their own valve time to fucking blame for that because they're by my yeah you know calculation they're about a year late on delivering that for people mm-hmm. to yeah the steam that came out in february 2022 so can, ah. can we get on it please <laughs> all right speaking of nintendo you might have caught the news earlier this week everybody valve was doing some very unvalve like things like filing the mca takedown notices you're like what you want yeah yeah, that happened. So, what? Here's the story. Here's the story. Two things got nuked this week Team Fortress 2 fan remake. And, so hot. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? They were remaking it in Shitbox and uh, using all the assets and everything. That, that's the new Gary's mod, effectively. And uh, you know what? I get it because Valve's like, no, nope, not, that's not yours. Token has, you didn't ask us. But the surprising one was something you might know about Portal 64, which is the Portal remake that actually runs on N64 hardware, which has been a very fascinating project to follow. That one got nuked too, but uh, that's because it was using Nintendo's proprietary libraries, Jordan Swang. 
which I kind of, yes. you know, I don't like that, but I get it. Yeah. And, and like, I, and, and again, this, this didn't, this wasn't, um, the, the portal 64 guys were like, Nintendo didn't contact us. Uh, Nintendo talked to valve and valve talked to them and they, they laid out the situation and valve was like, we're sympathetic, but we don't want to piss off Nintendo. So, um, and yeah, like, but, and we, we've seen this poor valve, uh, especially with like dolphin on steam valve is very yeah. has been very 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 cautious about pussyfooting around nintendo and i think this speaks to like a longer effort to try and work on them because like valve valve and nintendo are kind of similar right they're both stable companies that like can kind of do whatever they want and aren't necessarily subject to like the the the, the various title forces of the market so you know may, maybe Valve was like hey 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 uncle nintendo you you why don't, why don't we be friends at some point and you imagine so, though, think uh, about it think about it though which you're 100% right, but we've talked yeah. about this. Like, uh, Valve wants to play nice in Japan right now because they get the Steam Deck out. And, mm-hmm. But, Pedro, what do you think about this, though, man? Can you imagine the tsunami of money if you could get on the good graces of having the first Nintendo PC release on your platform? Yeah, that that is very much what Valve is hoping for. Uh, also, Valve have just And it's released. also going to be fucking Bayonetta 2, please. <laughs> Two Something and three. that was previously a Nintendo console exclusive doesn't even have to be a first party Nintendo, but Valve at the same time have just released a portal collection on the Switch. So it, at this point in time, they're very much not wanting to uh, piss off Big Daddy Nintendo. Uh, no, not at all. And yeah, no, the use of the, the library that they were using for the Portal 64 demake is... Um, well, Nintendo can't do anything about it legally, so to speak. But at the same time, it's not uh, stop Valve. Them. Yeah, Valve it, it doesn't want to piss off Nintendo, so it's it's very much like Jordan already said uh, what they did with Dolphin a couple of years ago, where it wasn't even it was Nintendo year, that went. No, that you can't have that. Like five months. Valve ago. themselves yeah. went to Nintendo and it's like, "Is this okay?" And Nintendo said, "Yeah, fuck no, it's not okay." So no, I can't have it. <laughs> somebody conduct, conducted somebody, and yeah, like I, I can. The valve's like not our war, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. we're, we're, I, I'm we're, very we're, much we're to be buddy, buddy. Uh, with yeah. them on not wanting to and, anger you know, Nintendo. <laughs> we, it could even be that, but I mean, it could just very be like we don't need this fucking headache. Like we right. don't need mm-hmm. to because you know who's Nintendo going to go after? Valve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Valve's like you know if we don't have this on the fucking store, we don't have to deal with it. So mm-hmm. there you go for sure. This next story is uh, something that I would be surprised if somebody in their audience has not run into over the last decade. Yeah, I love getting high and reading postmortems, and I was the only one who put notes in the show notes for this one, so I guess it's mine. So, um, Counter-Strike, Counter-Strike uh, Global Offensive slash Counter-Strike 2, uh, I guess these days, has uh, had a bit of a problem for the past 10 years. Periodically, you would get um, a no user logon uh, message when you were in a game. And you would be kicked out of your game, and no one knew why. Um, and so, uh, the, the, so these guys took it upon themselves to attempt to to uh, identify the, the the root cause. The link to all of this is in our show notes. So, the resulting reverse engineering took quite a bit of log crawling, decompiling, comparing notes with the leaked source engine source code, and then actually like uh, cor- uh, correlating user reports to figure out that this thing was happening at about 11 p.m. in Washington. Uh, on a Thursday, uh, and and only then, and it didn't happen to everyone. It only happened to some people. Uh, and so, after crawling through the code, after decompiling shit, and going through how the uh, how the the game engine is structured, it turns out that when uh, Counter Strike somebody starts a little up, snarky, ain't they? Oh yeah, a, li- a little bit. Because because there, there there were like fixes for this, right? You know, blow on the cartridge. You know, spin it around three times. If you say your hail marys and you say your and drink your milk. You won't get kicked out of your Counter Strike game anymore, um, but so uh, so the the actual cause is when the game starts up. Uh, there is there are a couple of uh, ongoing loops that fire up. One of which is the actual game loop itself, and the other one is a content validation uh, loop uh, to make sure that all of the skins you own are yours, to make sure that you are your correct user. And this um, and this these calls are funneled through uh, something called Steam Server Three or Steam Three. And now at 11 p.m. on Thursday, there's some sort of chore that happens on that server uh, that makes it really, really, really slow. And what will happen is your game will start up. uh, You'll be able to connect servers. 
but your game will also be attempting to call phone home to this validation server um, to verify your skins. Uh, they they cl they clued into this because they noticed someone eventually said, "Hey, I noticed also that my skins weren't loading before I got the message." And once they got that information, they went back to all the re other reporters and they're like, "Oh yeah, that was actually happening. We just didn't report it." So that was that was another that was another clue. So it's a race condition. You start up the game. Uh, you connect to a server. There's also a call to this validation server. If the call to the validation server times out and it has a very long timeout while you are in a game, it will kick you out. Um, it will kick you out of the server. The client will actually uh, restart the loop and you'll, your, your client will disconnect from whatever server it's connected to. And then you can start again. So the actual solution here is on Thursday nights, start up CSGO uh, about a couple minutes before you actually intend to start playing, uh, at which point you will either you will time out and get your assets validated uh, or your shit will just work. And after that, you'll just be able to connect two games uh, as normal. This kind of reminds me a little bit of the, the radioactive Soviet cow story I read a couple of years ago where there was like um, there was a train control system that was being fucked with because they were shipping a ton radioactive cows from Chernobyl in to the in internal of the Soviet Union. And the cows, the cars containing all the radioactive cows were sitting next to a control node that was flipping bits in the fucking memory of it. So like <laughs> this, this is, this is what that reminds me of where they had to like narrow it down to the time. They had to like send some guy out there with the Geiger counter to figure out what the hell is actually happening. But we have, we have to solve them. So, so, uh, yeah, this is on proteanjump.blog, which I assume this is, uh, from a valve employee, right? Uh, no, or, it's or, from someone who works on a... It's a TO for Counter-Strike tournaments, right? Yeah. Uh, Esportal is the name of the uh, Okay, the I'm portal. just reading at the bottom. <laughs> Opinions are my own or not the ones of my yes, employees. Uh, so. He works for Esportal. There's that, that's why there's that's an That's a e Pokemon. Shut up. <laughs> that, that, that's a Digimon. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's the Esports Digimon. It's Esportal. <laughs> Esportal. <laughs> but right. yeah, no, he uh, very much the, uh, like, the, the thing that got me was like the random person who said, yeah, no, sometimes my skins take a few minutes to load. And they were like, and you've known this for how long? And uh, everyone else was running into that too. And no one else had reported it either. That yeah. was the other thing. Like there's some crucial piece of information that just everyone skipped. Well, I mean, if it's happening to everybody, like there's like you, you that quickly becomes like, oh, that's just how it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's apparently the, the timeout it takes about three minutes. Uh, and some people are getting lucky. And on Thursday nights, after a minute and change, the uh, authentication happens and they don't get kicked out. Mm -hmm. But on other days, they also timed it. And apparently after like six seconds of finishing the map load cycle, it uh, like ticks in. It's like, yes, the those are your skins. You've been authenticated. It's like, oh, all right, cool. <laughs> uh jordan who makes pillars of eternity uh obsidian are they getting ready to make a new game there's going are to be a new game released this year a... yeah okay avernum uh, avernum okay I, I i haven't really been following obsidian stuff lately but uh, i was one of the original kickstarter backers for pillars of eternity because i like isometric rpgs and this was uh, way back when in, I don't know, I want to say like 2013 or something, we we're like, hey, we also like isometric RPGs. People stop making them. We're going to try and make one. Uh, and it got released. Uh, ran on Linux. Ran fine. Uh, and yeah, they have some updates. After nine years, um, mostly it's uh, game stuff, uh, some fixed quests, uh, some fixed spell effects and mechanical stuff. Um, but yeah, it's it's still it's still nice to see that uh, after nine years, they are still updating this. I would really like them to go back and add the turn based mode from Pillars of Eternity too, because real time with pause for D&D &D sucks and has always sucked. Um, but, but never Winter Nights. <laughs> it sucked. It sucked. It sucked. I like Temple, it. Of I genuinely... Evil... Temple of I, I, Elemental I, I, Evil I... did it better. Uh, yes, absolutely. The Temple of Elemental Evil was by far the best implementation, but comparing like the original um, Icewind Dale and uh, Baldur's Gate to Neverwinter Nights, Neverwinter Nights was such a step no, forward in that like Never hybrid Winter system. Neverwinter Nights had 3.0 <laughs> rules and not the yeah. not the second edition rules as mm -hmm. well. So <laughs> that that also helped quite a bit. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the reason I was asking about that, uh, if they were getting ready to release something, because you, you don't go back and work on something from like seven years ago unless you're getting ready to sell something and you got to make sure everything's in nice working order. Isn't that right, uh, developers of Nier? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, no, they, they are releasing a Vernum. No idea when they just have the uh, 2024 date on the. the I, I, think, oh. I, I think I think it's closer than you might think, man. Because I, I that is my new touchstone of like after four years of everyone bitching and moan, moaning and screaming about near automatic Tomata. Like, why is the PC? Why are we not ever getting a patch, an update, or anything? Then they're getting ready to sell new old near, and they're like. Surprise patch, bitches! <laughs> oh, look, oh, we fixed it. <laughs> okay, I'm. I, I, I was today years old when I found out about found out about avowed, and it's going to be Fallout avowed. set in the pillars yes. <laughs> about, and it's going to be Fallout set in the pillars of Eternity Universe. Oh my fucking god, give it to me! Wait yes, a minute. So yes. what? What is this going to be like? Fallout Magic it, Missile? It, it's going to be. Fu- it, it's going to be Skyrim. It's going to be it's fucking Skyrim. Skyrim. Skyrim in Pillars of Eternity lore. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm. I'm like actually stoked for this now. Holy shit! All right. Wow. Okay, Sounds like a good I'm, time. Maybe you'll be yeah. able to play it on your new Intel Lunar Lake, like with Battle Mage iGPU. But yeah, <laughs> I guess that's that's true. We're we're we're, we're out of Steam news. We're back on uh, we're back on that regular. Shit. I don't know. Pedro we're, was like, "What?" I'm like, "That's yeah, the next story. Come on, put it together." It was just a combination of words you use. It's like, yes, those were all technically words I understood. But yeah, so uh, we, we're, we're just reading some reports the title, from uh, man. W, don't get on my WCCF ass. Tech. Uh, yeah, uh, Lunar Lake with Battle Mage, almost two times faster than. Don't Arrow listen Mage. to Pedro Hassan. I think your title's just fun. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well I, I, you know whose titles aren't fine intel intel has some fucked up core naming conventions where it's like what h- half of them are like the 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 kb lake and the alder lake and the, all, all the other stuff big little I, I i don't know it's a it's a little fucked up but um yeah the the performance games from battle mage i gpus seem to be pretty significant up to two times in some cases which means that you know in, intel is their gpu division is actually not slouching which gives us some hope maybe for celestial and druid and stuff moving forward um but yeah this is this is in comparison with the latest uh with the latest uh, alchemist plus benchmarks and yeah i, I don't know it, benchmarks from intel need to be taken with like a giant boulder assault but it, it's it's promising it's hope for battle fanfic, mage mobile yeah. i mean yeah. dude we need uh amd definitely has proven like it's okay but we we need a good apu slap fight like uh you know it, mm-hmm. intel really pioneered the uh igpu but amd is like first one like to put some real 3d grunt behind it and uh amd's just kind of just been curb stomping them for a while now but like looking at this yeah this is going to be like a 20 percent bump over what's currently available with arc which really gets you into the playable category with a lot of stuff at 1080p definitely a 720p <laughs> yeah uh well i mean if you're playing on an apu that is what you're going to be playing with for the most part um yeah and like I'm, or, the, other thing, the, or, the other thing too or a handheld Yes. Yeah. Um, the, the the other thing too, I'm curious is if these performance games, how do they translate to uh, Battle Mage Desktop? When when you have a larger one thermal one. envelope, when Guaranteed. you have uh, yeah, heard it here first, when, exclusive. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, bigger thermal envelope, more power. You can squeeze a lot more out of the out of the hardware. Yeah. So I, I wonder, maybe maybe some Battle Mage uh, dedicated GPUs will like actually compete. Just with, a laptop uh, motherboard on a PCI Express, yeah. right? <laughs> Play yeah. right in. Done. Um, oh no, it's, it's, it's oh, soldered onto the, the motherboard. Um, yeah, it's just another CPU. Yeah, it's like two or yeah, three yeah. CPUs on there. Like there we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. I. I. I want. I. I. That is like th- that category because GPUs have just gotten so crazy priced right now. And you know, I do my best. The older I get, I try to think back of like being a broke ass teenager, man. Like trying to scrounge parts together to build a PC because all my friends were building PCs, and like. That is nigh fucking impossible to get away with these days. Like, you know, if you you got like a little part time job, a couple hundred bucks, you can be saving for a long time. I mean, it's got a little bit better, but like, even, you know, we're going to be talking about 1650s right now. That's not something you just go pick out for like 40, 50 bucks these days, but being able to get like something workable, like right out of the box, makes me happy. But then again, this is going to be Intel pricing. So who knows, right? Yeah, that's the big. (laughs) <laughs> what are they going to price it at? Do then you, again, Pedro, um, do you think Intel's biggest motivation to get back on top is so they can get back to fuck you pricing for another decade? Hundred percent, hundred percent. That's, that's, that's the what thing. they want. Yeah, they want to get there, but uh, the A series did so very poorly to start with, mostly due to Intel's own doing. Uh, that they, I don't think they can. <laughs> 
or if they try, they're immediately going to get panned in all the reviews. But I genuinely, genuinely want Intel to... I want them to have the sensibly priced, like the good entry level video card. Would be very nice if it was like, no, 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 fuck AMD, fuck NVIDIA, go Intel. So by entry, you mean 300 bucks, right? No, I mean entry level, like 100 or 150. Can't have like that. the 750 Ti used nope. to be back in the day. It was uh, $150. No, 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 those no, days I, are gone. I, I, I yeah. was told by both of you two weeks ago those days were gone. Not going to happen anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I want those days to come back, and hopefully Intel has the... um they have the money to take a little bit of a beating on the price to become basically the dominant force in frontier gaming graphics. yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah because I, that's no we... i mean listen uh, nvidia's already shown that they have fuck no interest on low end uh like they're yeah. just doing shit to fuck with people at this point because they think it's funny uh and amd has to have something because they're but they aspire to become nvidia and not have to give any fucks whatsoever about the consumer gpu division trust me they don't want to deal with that they want to sell those big cheddar ai accelerators nbus and this is you know but intel wants that ai cheddar too but like intel's intel came out and showed that you can release a 16 gig fucking card um for 300 bucks like, despite what both AMD and NVIDIA and people who have a fuck all idea how supply side economic works going, no, no, it's impossible to build one for like less than $600. I'm like, no, no, baby. The memory is not, if you look at the RAM prices nowadays, you can get a lot of RAM for not a lot of money. RAM but- fucks you up depending on your bus. And how much yes. you got to add in order, you know, 128, 192, and 256, like, depending on how you're going to be stacking that. But again, to what you're saying, RAM is cheap. The only reason you're not releasing a fucking 24 or 48 gig fucking card is because you want that card to be $10,000 more. Yes. That, which, it, that very much speaks to the Intel, um, the, the way that they've priced the Xeons and the way that they've effectively segregated ECC memory to only the ten thousand, five thousand dollar parts. Those are the only ones that can do uh, ECC memory, and I'm so, very much with Linus Torvalds on that one. Which ECC memory should be commonplace on the desktop? Fuck Intel and everything that they claim to the contrary. So, do we, do, do do we want to shift the conversation over to the the next thing because it's kind of related to this with the with the new uh, eight thousand? I wanted to have a fight about U Dems versus R Dems. <laughs> can, can, can we have like a sword fight where we have like Udims versus Ardims and you're like trying to like kill each other with like a sharp yes, we can. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Uh, up next, AMD has launched the 8000 G desktop CPUs <laughs> with iGUPS and AI acceleration because fuck you all. We're, we're going to staple AI to everything these days. This was announced at CES. What do we get? We get an 8700 G, 86, 85, and 83, respectively packing in 780M. 760M, 740M, and uh, again, with a 740M, all 65 watt TDPs going from 24 megajoules of cash all the way down to 12 for our four core, eight thread, little peasant box, but still interesting to see because uh, that 8700G is only going to run you 329 watt stinky caches. And if AMD is to be believed, we're looking at performance up to and kind of close where it rubs elbows with a 1650, which isn't bad. You can do some, you know, 720, 1080p gaming on that. And 229 for the six core, and of course, 179 for our basic bitch model. Um, our DNA 3, again, 65 mm-hmm. watts. These things are probably going to be a little bit toasty. But, uh, Pedro, these are uh, chips that have kind of been around for a minute, though, right? They have. The, uh, if you look at any of the supposed Steam Deck competitors. God damn it, AMD. Just for once, I want to see. I, we, we have like smooth, full. I want to see rough as all fuck HD. <laughs> <laughs> Jagged. Uh, yeah, no, the uh, like the supposed Steam Deck competitors from the other uh, brands we've seen. Uh, they, they've all been running the 780M, but they haven't had, you know, 
the desktop uh, packaging that runs two or three times more power through them. And e- even if it only has uh, the 12 compute units, that trading blows with the 1650 is good. That's damn good. That's because insane when you think about it. It's on chip. That, that's a, it's yeah, a dedicated it, GPU it's competing it with. It was right? a dedicated, like, yeah. an entry-level dedicated GPU from three years ago or four years ago, something like that. It's good. The, that's this, a this is kind very of been, good business proposition. <laughs> and, and this has kind of been the dream with APUs, right? Is like, yeah, it doesn't have to be the best GPU, but like with, 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 the, with the thermal envelope, with the power of whatever, of like a desktop part, yeah. You yeah, can yeah. you can stick something that is equivalent to a dedicated GPU on there. Yeah, I mean, you I absolutely good. That's if the that's why Nvidia. CPU. Yeah, that I wonder if that's why Nvidia is going. Oh, okay. So I suppose we better have something for the low end, and that's why they're doing the six gig thirty fifty, which doesn't require any extra PCIe power connectors. It's just powered off of the bus. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So apparently these guys also aren't using the 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 chiplet designs. These are all like all on on like single die chiplets. Yeah, jump. And apparently, I, I can't find in the article, it was in one of the original ones, where it was like, apparently the 8600 is also using like a little big architecture as well. It's got like some lower power cores and it has some like big bigger juice cores as well. The 8500 doesn't have that though. It's just the 8600. But, the oh. 80, but, but I think the 8500 also drops the AI acceleration as well. That's... Am, am I, am I misremembering? Nah, I don't know. Uh, one thing they do make a little bit of an update here is the uh, 8000G yes, yes, chips are going to be uh, PCI Express 4.0, not 5. Mm. Yes, because the original slides said that that was going to be PCIe 5, but no, as it turns out, it's no. going to be PCIe 4. Another which thing, is okay. You'll be okay. Don't worry. <laughs> which was a little bit jaw dropping at CES. AMD announced a new CPU for AM4. Mm. Yes. Socket AM4 got a new chip in 2024 because that I think they're just going to release one a year just to fuck with people <laughs> at this point to see where they can they want to put just like a little bit extra for the longest running socket ever like they, they just, just want to stretch it out just a little bit more <laughs> make sure they get that locked down like the releasing the the 5600 GT is great that's awesome mm-hmm. just you know m- more AM4 is great because yeah. AM4 has been around since 2016 it's so. cheap too it, yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been a stalwart. Like it, like it, yeah. like rem- remember AM three? That shit was good, and like they repeated it with AM four. That was mm-hmm. and like and, AM uh, AM four is like AM three, but good. Yeah, <laughs> and if that uh, Ryzen five fifty six hundred GT had instead of the Vega CPU uh, GPU, it had an RDNA two one. Not saying like the Steam Deck, but close enough that it would be pretty good for gaming. That would have been a much better nah, uh, maybe. value proposition. I, 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 let's do Vega graphics. <laughs> well, v- v- Vega's dead, bro. We're yeah, they don't even support anymore. Vega in the mainstream dr- proprietary drivers anymore. So, <laughs> how am I going to play my vintage games? Well, maybe I'm going to break this bad boy out. AMD RX 7600 XT. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. You've probably heard those number digits before. But wait, there's more. Why? Because at the end of the story is two number digits 16 well you, you, you know you're, you're talking about uh intel proved that you can release a 16 gig card for under 350 amd's like all right fine <laughs> you fine. four star hands <laughs> uh yes but not like this <laughs> not like this um dude i don't know 320 bucks that's 60 dollars more than the 7600 non-xt variant released a couple of months back and um my, my biggest thing is is like I'm, I'm looking at these benchmarks i'm like all right let me zoom in and enhance on this let me open this image in a new tab so everybody at home can see it there we go oh you still can't see it oh i'm mean, gonna <laughs> see if i can i do a super zoom and get to it it's Nvidia, so blurry. <laughs> more blur that's as big as i can make it can i <laughs> oh. anyway at the end of the day down here there we go 26 yeah uh, that, the gray, six that, that gray bar is the yes, exactly. The uh, well, you, did they ever release anything outside of the six gig for the 2060? That's, oh, that's that's a that's a good question because it might be hard to remember because that, that's five years ago, right? Uh, that's yeah. a five year old car. They have a 12 gig 2060. There were rumors of it, I think. They, there might have been like an OE for whatever. Oh, no, so, yes, uh, six gig is where it uh capped out. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway. Oh wait, no, there's a 12 gig? What the fuck? That's yeah. For the mining. <laughs> I'm not imagining that. I thought they okay, released okay. that. 
And you know what? I, I rocked and rolled. I have a Founders Edition 2060, and that's what caught, caught me off guard here because that's like they are comparing this to a five year old, you know, a GPU from 2019, and it's about 15, 20% faster in most cases. In, in some games, it's twice as fast. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like, I get, I get why it's five years. Like, yeah, oh, I got to upgrade your old crusty 2060, bro. 16 gigs. <laughs> Yeah, but, and the price, I think the, the, they're comparing it to that because the other car that's currently around $330 is the 3060 Ti, and if they compared it to that, it wouldn't look very good, even with twice the memory. So, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, and, 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 NVIDIA, and, 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 God damn it, NVIDIA, where is my 40, 50, 24 gig? I'll buy it. At this point, I have to buy it if you make it. And, 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 and like... You, 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 gotta, you gotta ask, like, what, 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 it, what is the advantage here over the, the 7600? Because, like, you do... All you get is the higher power consumption and more memory. Mm -hmm. So if you're if if you're not VRAM bound, then yeah, this is kind of a kind of a move. You point. get yeah the, the same amount of CUs, the same stream processors. It, it's a slightly CU. faster clock, but yeah, the big advantage is twice the memory RAM. Yeah, but the big thing, like right in the fucking knees, is a hundred twenty eight bit bus. Mm-hmm. That, that's the same as the 7600 it's yeah <laughs> not yeah. good <laughs> it's it, that, so 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 you're saying you get like what 12 and a half gigs of ram out of this one out of the 16 well you get your 16 <laughs> but i mean come on man like yeah, at least do 192 right i i was excited about this until i looked up the specs and i'm like that's a dumpy card of course mm. yeah and you're they, they have the uh, the bandwidth of the uh, the memory there it's like 288 gigabytes per second in 2024, you're releasing something with less than 300 gigabytes per second when that's what NVIDIA has at the low end. What are you doing? Hey, man, this would have been an awesome card a year and a half ago. Yeah, it's yeah. 16 gigs, man. For that's, that price? That's what you, yeah. That's yeah. what you guys wanted. You guys were saying we want cards with 16 gigs. Then again, gigs you know, a year and a half ago, this card would have been 500 bucks minimum. Yeah, immediately, as soon as it got it. <laughs> if, if you could get your hands on it. Right. And uh, I, I, NVIDIA played, uh, they did a very clever thing, uh, which is when they released the 4060 and the 4060 Ti to be the exact same performance level as the 3060 and the 3060 Ti, uh, they've effectively created a, they've created a target absolutely, for everyone to stimulate. It, no, they, they've given no reason for Upgrading. any of the retailers to lower the price on the 30 series. So now the 4060 and the 4060 Ti cost the exact same amount of money I checked on Amazon earlier as the uh, the 3060 and the 3060 Ti. They're all around the thir 300, um, mm -hmm. 280 to 350 dollar price point for two different, completely supposedly different generations of GPUs. Fuck you, Nvidia. <laughs> No, man. Seriously. The one thing that NVIDIA does, and I'm assuming AMD does it because we don't see it. I mean, if you've been around, like if you can roll the clock back, you got to roll it back like seven years. Used to be AIBs, uh, you know, your EVGAs, your MSIs would get the reference design. Then they could fucking have at overclock the snot out of it, do crazy memory things, put two oh, GPUs those, on like, one card. Mm -hmm. Remember those like Acer ones that came in like the briefcase? Like the, the yeah. what, what were they called? I, I, I don't even remember. Yeah, right? They, well, they, yeah, they were like $1,500 for Did a the GPU. briefcase give it away? The, yeah, mm -hmm. no, back, back when, back when $1,500 for a GPU was like actually considered uh, was expensive. Titan pricing, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah $1,500 <laughs> wasn't like, your brain couldn't handle that. You're like, wait, what? Oh. Yeah, now now now, now fifteen hundred dollars will get you like a forty sixty, right? Like yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, twenty. That's that's a nice GPU. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's it's, not even like a it's baller like a, GPU. Up, up, upper mid range GPU. Um, yeah. I wish, like you know, I I have to imagine that AMD has the same restrictions that its Nvidia does because you don't see any like unhinged uh, AMD cards either. Or uh, uh, the AMD cards are uh, already. As much as, as, well as they can as be, as much as, yeah, they're like yeah. No. They, they can't really go any further because oh, the 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 wait, silicon, yeah, there, 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 there's a couple labs that were set on fire because they tried to do like a dual <laughs> RDNA three like, card. Why do uh, it's, uh oh this car? Oh, do I get the hand trucks? Will they all in two cooler uh, combo package? All right, neat. All right. <laughs> 
Yeah, you have the active water chiller in order to run <laughs> <Yeah>. the Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, it, it just comes with like a refrigerator you plug in. Yeah, you can you can all it, in addition to cooling your CPU and your GPU, it can also chill your drinks. It's awesome. <laughs> Good news, everybody. We're getting AV one on Twitch. Oh my god! Finally, yeah. As, as someone with like a brand new AMD card with that nice AV one support, I waited for it. I was looking forward to when Twitch would allow me to use my my fancy new encoding. But I can't because our this brand new open standard of AV1 exclusively on NVIDIA 40 series. So there's a, there's a couple things going on here. Twitch is announcing the enca- uh, enhanced broadcasting beta. And what this does is if you have a 40 series GPU and a special version of OBS, if you are selected, uh, you can uh, you can have all of the transcode load moved on to your GPU because er- the, you have all those fancy dual encoders on your card. You can shit out a bunch of AV1 or uh, HVEC streams. Uh, at various resolutions, send them to Twitch at your expense because you're sending like three times the traffic now, ostensibly, and then they can mix and match and serve an appropriately encoded bitrate to whoever's uh, to to someone on a good connection or a bad connection on the other end. And of course, as part of this, they're going to be rolling out AV1 to these uh, to these users. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> so, 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 so screwy, wouldn't you say? <laughs> It, it, they either paid NVIDIA or NVIDIA offered to do it oh, for in, them. Oh, NVIDIA in paid them. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, one or the other, but it's like, okay, we'll do it for you, but you got to give us some exclusivity, at least for a little bit. You you, you got to wonder, though, because, like, <laughs> it's it's the same signal, right? Can you just send, like, AV1 from your AMD card if you can, like, spoof the client? Someone's going to figure out, because OBS is open source, so someone's going to figure out how to do that. <laughs> now, the biggest issue with this is... Uh... This is less to do about AV1. AV1 is going to be rolling out. It is. Mm -hmm. Um, The big push here is like the NVIDIA thing is more to do about the custom OBS, which is going to do, and this is going to be for everybody, auto adjust your stream quality and figure all this nonsense out. So Twitch Twitch is like, we're experimenting with this AV1 thing. And I don't know, they're pushing the responsibility for encoding to the end user somehow try, they're trying to push this as a feature and i've seen some streamers like yeah it's a feature I'm like no what the fuck it's not not in a little bit man um having that exclusive to nvidia you know team green baby uh rtx is uh yeah nvidia either paid for it or walked in offered to do the fucking work because nvidia does shit like that that's why they got so much goddamn market share amd take fucking notes um and this is going to require a special version of obs like you said uh, it's not going to be available on Linux yet or ever, whoever knows. And uh, <laughs> they said they're going to work to get it integrated with the OBS regular, you know, vanilla flavored eventually. So we'll see how that works. But doing the automatic stream configuration is going to put you in a situation to where, and that's how this works, by the way, your stream is going to look as good as the software deems fit. It's going to make these decisions for you. You're not going to have like, hey, you know what? I just want to make it as crisp as possible. I'm going to do high frame rate. And it's like, ah, oh, this is what you get. Now, this only makes sense. This is something that I've you seen know, a lot of people like just gloss over and leave out. Um, if you have a spare streaming PC and you got, you know, at least 500 megabits up, oh, 300 will probably work just fine. 100 is going to really work just fine. But two C saves packages these days you usually have gigabit. Um, because if you're doing three or four encodes, no matter how many in V encode, you got two chips on the 40 series. So there's your four streams right there. Uh, NV encode is very low performance impact, but it's not zero. You can still look at like a 10% hit to do an encode stream in OBS, uh, depending on what you're using, it can be lower in a lot of cases. But if you're doing four streams, you're busting it down for them, that will be noticeable performance wise. I don't care if anybody tells you differently in that full of shit or they don't understand the architecture um no also on. heat <laughs> the heat will bring the clocks down on the, the rest of the gpu even if it's not using the same side of the chip there's m- more of a heat load that needs to be dissipated have you seen the coolers on these 40 series pedro <laughs> the, the like the higher end ones they have chunky coolers the lower end ones <laughs> Lower end ones don't need it because they don't go that fast. <laughs> uh, there, there's a ginormous jump between like the 4070 and the 4090. 4090 is like, fuck you, we'll melt cables. And like the 40, 
<laughs> that's the one that you see like uh, uh, Steve from Gamers Nexus going <laughs> yeah like right. the, the whole thing like, you, you use a 4070 to prop up your fucking 4090 all right like to yeah keep it from well side. yeah the, the kickstand right yeah, yeah. um going yeah, through all yeah, this yeah, hassle yeah, like GPU really only gets yeah. interesting to me because at the end of the day when this all gets done and boiled out and twitch is still around hopefully in some shape form or fashion we will have a uh, av1 ingest but even then that's not terribly interesting because you can already send av1 to youtube but the catch is anywhere you send av1 like i'm sending uh not right now actually no not right now but when we were doing the previous super shows and i send uh, h265 which is very equivalent to AV1, better in several cases, but it's really got patents around it. And that's why we ended up with AV1, which is good, which is open. Um, but what you're watching at home has been re-encoded to 264. So you might be able to send a lot to Twitch, but if they're still transcoding it, this is going to get interesting once and if they work out me sending AV1 and you being able to just get that stream where they're just effectively relaying it. That could be very fucking promising. Also, it sounds like a lot to go wrong. I look forward to playing. <laughs> You'd think that if, you know, we're already doing that with X264 or H264 currently. We're not. Then... <laughs> they, I, you're sending 264, they're re encoding it and sending X264. Yeah, at, at a lower bit rate. But yeah, it is. Ah, it shouldn't be hard. Come it's on. not. I mean, we're uh, having our conversation right now uh, using VP. No, we're not. We're, or what are we doing? Are we doing 264? No, we're doing VP. No. Uh, that's, VP8. That's, VP8. That's, VP8. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> on a Raspberry Pi point to point, but we're not re encoding anything. Oh, we're just doing the initial encode and stream back and forth. Uh, getting that worked out might work, but I mean, this, this is all such a kludge bullshit solution. Like they should be able to, I mean, Twitch has like, they, you're never going to convince me that they've managed to structure. Cause every time this is brought up to Twi <laughs> Twitch, uh, the head of Twitch, whoever it is at the current time, he's like, you don't understand how our company struck. We have to operate as an independent company. And I'm like, you need to unfuck that situation then. Yeah, yeah, you have, you have AWS. Bezos money, so fuck you. No, no, <laughs> right. Not, not, not even that. You have the infrastructure, like, right. All, all of Amazon, right? right? Like, yeah. you, you have, like, access to 30-something percent of the fucking internet. Yeah, yeah. AWS. <laughs> so, like, that something needs to change, and I'm scared when it does get changed, it's not going to be pretty. But my, like, my, my, Mind you, they did all that shit with GitHub when they moved it all to Azure, and now GitHub goes down every other week, so... Uh, uh, well, it's been about a week, maybe two weeks, like, they changed something in GitHub, because you notice, like, when you hit the uh, GitHub webpage, dude, like, it, the repo loads in a little bit slower now. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah like, some You get, the, like, the borders and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, then, the actual then they, middle of the right. page, it takes a while. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not... I'm, I'm, I'm gonna blame Azure. Let's... <laughs> sure. Just to shit on Microsoft. Might as well <laughs> good news everybody uh they got rid of that horrible uh cancerous open source software in the unity store can't have that gpl in unity except for L all L of the other yeah uh, all of the other assets that are also using the exact same version of lgpl but uh no can't have vlc though uh and the vlc folks went well then fuck you uh, they basically got banned. Uh, they got to a point where they were going back and forth for years with Unity because uh, the like the little asset that they use to allow people to use VLC to decode and show things in Unity games or Unity software that they're building. Uh, it's licensed with LGPL and. Unity is like, no, we're not having that. You can't have that. It's not compatible. And they've had the, the, the one of the um, the people at Unity is saying, is not, look, we've had this discussion with Microsoft for uh, UWP. We've had this discussion with uh, Google for Android. We've had this discussion with Apple for iOS. Yes, we can. But no, they got to a point where they just gave up and Unity banned them altogether. Now, this is kind of an issue because there are people who are using unity professionally not necessarily for games but to develop other software and they need to have a store that gives them any kind of guarantee uh that if they have an issue with the plugin or the whatever um that they will be able to get support so they're introducing the video lab store 
to sell exactly that. So uh, for the people who can build them from source and who are not beholden to um, having uh, SLAs or anything that their company needs, uh, they could just build it themselves. But for everyone else who does require that SLA, who does require the support or the licensing, yeah. Video Lab Store. That's where you're gonna go to get the uh, the VLC plugin and for like, Unity. They're, they're not the least. Like we offer to pull everything out, and uh, one of the I ran across this on Hacker News, and you know, uh, I, I like Hacker News because of the people you see in the comments. Because like this is a great title drop when they were discussing the uh, LGBL, <laughs> isn't it? When when they originally yes. wrote that license yeah. back in yeah. 91. So when, when I, wrote I the originally license. wrote that, which is like winning immediately, it's like, all right, cool. There's the hat Pri- drop. Primary source. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, you know, fair point. He's like, I don't understand how you could deploy um, LGPL code on platforms like that in the first place. Oh, uh, but because yeah, uh, if you're dynamically linking the libraries, then yes, you are effectively creating a need for those libraries to be LGPL also. Um, but you can work around it, you know, containerization is a thing, mm-hmm. uh, and other means of packaging. You can absolutely work around that. And they had, like, <laughs> they said it's like Microsoft, Apple, Google, they managed to get oh, yeah. well, those and, libraries and, up and running on those systems with no issues. And 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 you and you would think this is extra boneheaded because it's VLC. <laughs> you know that fucking media player that literally everyone knows that yeah. is like so ubiquitous and supports everything. On that you, same you, hacker you, news thread, yeah, dude, like the, the president, president of VLC. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he showed up and he's like, "Hey, man, like we've worked with Apple, we've worked with Google Play and Windows and all that, but Unity was a headache." An order of magnitude bigger. No answers. Three different yeah. answers contradicting each other and plain bad faith. And also takes to point out that they use LGPL and open source to build their own platform. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're talking they to have... in the original post about how they were selectively enforcing this on other plugins as well. No. Yeah. They, they, the they current... have other plugins that have FFpeg yeah. and other LGPL licensed stuff. The, the so running this is theory bullshit. in this thread is like <laughs> Unity's getting ready to release their own media plugin for Unity. <laughs> yeah, you, Unity you making see. boneheaded decisions. That, why I never. <laughs> that, you know, you, you can buy directly from them and they'll make sure you're taken care of. As opposed to that well-vetted plugin that works on fucking everything. Literally everything. It's, you can't trust it. It wears a Santa hat in the summer. <laughs> Listen, yeah, I, we're, we're, a couple we're, of we're days all, a year. All, wears a Santa we're, hat. We're all safety wizard appreciators here. I mm-hmm. think. I think that 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 is that is that is plainly to be seen. We our our, our bias is clearly showing, but still, fuck Unity. <sighs> it, it, it's uh, yeah. You you would think like you want to you'd want to dial back some of the dumbness after the uh, whole. Uh, bright idea that they had it's not even road shooting at this point it, it, it's literally they've already sawn their own feet off and they're presuming yeah. to consume yeah, the, them well you know who, who was it <laughs> they, that they don't they have that torso part left anymore merged <laughs> with uh iron source right the uh mobile advert company yes the this, not malware yeah, advertising yeah, yeah, company yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, just to give you that perspective the two founders of that company left this week they're like we're out <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> the, the guys responsible for the mobile adware company are like nah, it's too sketchy for nah, us. the people who stood to make the most money went yeah fuck that if that doesn't so, tell you that that unity is headed unity is headed straight to the ground <laughs> who knows um uh, maybe they can have a patent about it <laughs> they probably already do but uh no this one is from input labs uh the uh creators of the alpaca open source controller and it is because of all the research and development that they did in order to create the alpaca that they kind of saw themselves forced to file a couple of patents um two of them to be specific they they did it because they want to basically get ahead of the patent trolls they want to make sure that it since it is their research and it was their development that allowed the alpaca and every other controller that they intend to make going forward to be as free and open source as it is that they don't want the community being hit by some stupid patent troll that's never made anything and just bought some patent and away we go. Um, so that's one of the reasons. The other reasons is they w- would like to make money off of their research, obviously. 
So they've put, uh, if you actually look at the article that I linked in the Alpaca review, that they, um, where they show all the research as to why having two uh, accelerometers or gyroscopes in the controller and then just having effectively the average of the two being the actual gyro value that goes into it and the difference it makes in both the precision and how reliable it is uh, compared to other gyro implementations there's a very good you know th there's a lot of work put into that and they could probably stand if they could license that research for other companies legitimately they could make a lot of money off of that so very much uh, a very good reason to patent it they do say they're very quick to point out this is not going to affect the alpaca and all of the creative commons and gpl licensed stuff all of that will still be available for everyone so if you're building your own cool go ahead but yeah it is a damn good gyro implementation as gyro based controllers go the alpaca is really good and if they made that with very little money to start with, I look forward to what they can do with licensing money coming in. Now, this all <laughs> does boil down to like whether or not they're going to be granted a patent. Yeah, it's still patent pending, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that's going to do it for our show proper, ladies and gentlemen. But if you want to reach out and touch someone, go ahead and do it. Just ask their permission first. We don't require that because we're not going to let you touch us in the first place. But you can digitally you can touch me. Send out some data bits head over to linuxgamecast.com smash that contact form fill it out give us a name give us an email we'll read over it we we just might just might read it on this very show like one fox cow did talking about vulcan this week jordan yeah not mr fox dog mr fox cow says hey lgc i've been contemplating a gp upgrade for a bit and I've been reading great things about AMD cards since Pedro for a while and recently Jordan went Team Red, I decided to give it a shot and I upgraded from a 3080 12 gig to a 7900 XT. Mesa was already installed, Fedora 39. Ay. So all I had to do was rip out the NVIDIA drivers, which you don't even need to do. I still have mine installed for no fucking good reason. <laughs> um, it has been fantastic. It feels better than the mild upgrade expected, according to the Passmark GPU benchmarks. I am, however, curious if Jordan and Pedro have experienced the following. The time required for Vulcan Shader compilation has all but disappeared, with the 3080 12 gig required several minutes for some games, BG3 satisfactory, while well, as the 7900 XT requires far less. I just fired up BG3 after several weeks and it took about 20 seconds. This seems strange to me since this work is done on the CPU. Keep it up and thanks for the excellent work. I think a lot of that, the the, the latter point has to do with the fact that there's a lot more shaders being grabbed for uh, AMD cards, especially for driver versions that are a lot more static than, ah. say, NVIDIA. Uh, well, I also think like a lot of more people have a uh, recent code. No, the, the 30s, like 3080s and the 40s, like we couldn't, they were on Obtainium, man. Yeah. Also, yeah. by the by the way, can I have your 3080? Are you, if you're just not using it, can, can, can I have it? <laughs> nah, man, I'm, I'm going to put it in my, uh, I don't know, it's going to hold in, up. In, it's, it's, it's in my, it's going to be in my coffee table slash display case. Yeah, I, I would put it on the wall. Yeah, but but yeah, seriously, like if you, if you don't want it anymore, like hit me up. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll give it a good home. I I'm not above that. If I was over at somebody's house and they got a 3080 just on the wall, I'm like, bro. <laughs> so um, you're not using? It? Yeah, like <laughs> you, you, like I, I don't want to. You, you gonna eat that? Yeah. Yeah, the the thing I noticed that made the most difference. So why are you the, calling um, me? Listen, just because somebody took your thirty eighty while you were why 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 are you even calling me? What do I got to do with this? That's silly. The th what made the biggest difference in the shader compilation time was ticking the box that says um, compile uh, shaders yeah, while the, the computer is idle. Yeah, yeah, that's that makes all of the difference. That you just oh, tick yeah. that and that's walk away and come back and everything's compiled and you remember <laughs> that you took the box when you're sitting there doing fuck all right now script out and you hear and like what the fuck's going on yeah here, you man? look it up it's like why is pressure of us uh ah, you're right the, uh, got it shaders right yeah. okay Understood. <laughs> doing as told that's pretty cool um no i'm glad your 7900 xt is working out for you it's really nice really slick um cool yeah, give, 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 give me your 3080 <laughs> give it to me what are you going to do with 3800 XT? What do you want what? about? <laughs> Shut up. Just give me the card. It's none of your, it's none of your fucking business. How about you mind your own? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, if you like our business and you want to help us out and get some cool shit back in return, like early access to uh, the live and uncut version of this show, you also get it in podcast formats, usually about like the entire live stream, pre-show, pre-pre-super shows and after show, which we're about to go into. 
if you're listening to the podcast version, there's a little bit more left, and there was some before you got here. We make all of that available, and uh, I always put up some early sneak peeks for stuff that I'm working on for other various projects, access to our Discord, and a whole lot more. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Like a returning character, Haplo. Aww. <laughs> Welcome back. Oh, we, yeah, we, we also got to thank all uh, all Unoid as well, don't we? As well, Hi. Unoid, yes. Uh, with the uh, one dollar coming in, thank you very much. Seriously, hi. <laughs> back to it. Uh, we do appreciate your support. Uh, we always try to make it worth your while. Uh, give you a bunch of bonus stuff, and if you get a chance, head over to uh, interfacinglinux.com. Knock on that a little bit. I want to say it's about ninety five percent ready. To go. I got a lot of the content moved over there and I'm already working on some new stuff and the forums seem to be working. And there's really only like one visual thing that's bugging me. And if you know what, if you po- if you find it, go ahead and post in the general section on the forums <laughs> and let me know. It's like, ah, I found it because J- just send a no context screenshot, just like screenshot it and then paste <laughs> yep. it. Those will be nodders. Like, yep, that, that's what's driving me up the wall right now trying to get that fixed. Well, lads, that is going to wrap us up for this week so let's cue the music you can always find us kicking off right here on twitch as long as twitch is around not navy one quality quite yet but 8 30 eastern standard moon time an hour beforehand if you're a death note patron or above we are live in discord for the pre-pre super shows and if you were an executive producer we even give you a video feed to play the home game if you want to get in touch with me, at Vin Stone on Zitter, or I'm just at Vin on Blue Sky, and uh, at Vin on our Mastodon, mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm Jordan, and if you have a spare 3080 Ti, 4090, 4060, 12 gig, 16 gig, 7800 XT, 6800 XT, and any of that, you can hit me up. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take them off your hands, at the Burning Fool on Twitter, at uh, Frojo, at mast.linuxgamecast.com. And at Frojo on Blue Sky. Yeah. And I am unaccounted for for most social medias, but also unaccounted for with the actual number four uh, at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Time for some credits. <laughs> Senor accounted for. <laughs> the one accounted for. <laughs> unaccounted for. <laughs> une, une accounted for? Une accounted quatre? <laughs> Mais oui? He's like a unicycle well, that knows the arithmetic. <laughs> Right, we gotta thank our advisors, Omega Sartharin, our executive producers, Park Bram, Scott Show, Tom Cass, Mike G, Drummer, Tomas, Hakeem, Dave, Hoplo, Eshep, and uh, Ian, and our little Nicky fans, Super Desto, Empty, and Eggy. The same monsters are no Rider X, Machina, Trudgy Ferris, and Uta, Justin, Darkwing, System T, Denzing, Joe, and Ogi One, and the Death Notes, Nova, Chad, Romeo, Renee, Leonardo, the Crazy, Kim, Jemberfang, uh, Kim, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2, that watch, Stephen B, Rue, Beck, Turnover, Zeno, Pebble, Mr. Foxdog, Svine, Jalu, and Piper. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> yeah. Got him. Fine, upstanding cannibals, ladies and gentlemen. From our Amazon Wish Zone, Carl, Mike, Arthur, and Linux New World, DS Noctilus, Johnny, Shep, Gamatron, Unoid, DSN, Joe, Aromatic, Dev, and Kai Joriah. Thank right. you very much, Haplo. Thank you very much, Unoid. You're all truly wonderful. Well, we'll be back next week in <laughs> AV10 Vision. Maybe. If, if you get a 4090. <laughs> yeah, Ven's gonna buy a 40 series card now. <laughs> I've already bought a GPU that caused me to curl up in a fetal position and rock in a corner once, dude. I don't know if I can. Oh, you bought that Matrox card? <laughs> <laughs> Dynify, everybody. We'll see you next week. Five dudes. <laughs>